see you. Hi everybody, thanks for inviting me uh, to come and speak, Karen. Uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's one of the first talks I've done on this. We've been online, uh, this, this topic has been online for a year, uh, oh, just over a year. Funny enough, somebody, um, in fact, Chris was saying, um, he, he went to look on YouTube and there's now thousands and thousands of videos and video makers on this. When we started looking at it a year ago, um, when somebody first brought it to our attention, there was two or three. Uh, video makers. That's how quickly this this topic has um, mushroomed and and exploded. Really, um, normally people and you know the story with when, when and I'm seeing it now. Like I said, I've been on board for best best part of a year with this realization. Really, um, and the story you see all the time is at first I thought, yeah, what a crazy topic. Yeah, whatever. It's lunatic. Um, but when I looked at it, I looked in for a couple of weeks, I watched videos, I did measurements, I, I thought about this, that and the other and all the rest of it. And I came back and I can't believe it, you know, the, the world is right. It's, it's, a, it's a story we hear it again and again and again. I've been doing it for, for a year and um, people either get on board with it or, or they're closed off. You know, it's like, you know, I'm not having any of it and that's fine. Um, what I, what, what uh, I'm really grateful for is the opportunity to come and, and, and talk about this stuff live. Um, you know, in front of a live audience and see how it goes. I've no idea how it's going to go, so we'll see. Um, the, um, the, the similarities between what you already know, can you move to the next slide? The similarities between what you already know and, and this topic um, should become self-evident, you know, through, through the talk I'm going to do. <clears throat> and that's what I've concentrated on. These are the four things. First of all, because um, this topic does drive people nuts, there's a difference between your primary knowledge and your secondary knowledge, and I'm going to contradict myself as you always do later on, but your primary knowledge is what you can obviously take from your own experiences, your own observations, your own evidences, but I also included that, included in that, uh, the witness testimony of several, you know, of reliable people, so, you know, ordinary people say, lots of Australians say it goes dark at the same time as, you know, it's light here. <clears throat> you take you take the word for it. You can't be in two places at once. That kind of thing. Secondary secondary knowledge is quite clearly everything that you've been told that you can't prove for yourself. We all know that there are there is you know history lies etc etc. I mean, you can go on, on and on with that. But just throughout throughout this topic, you need to bear in mind that the the complete between what you can actually verify for yourself with your own senses. What can I see here? Feel? What can I test? If you're you know if you're into science, what can I set up experiments for? What can I observe? Uh, through my telescope, etc., etc. What can I see for myself, and what is then inferred knowledge? What's oh yeah, that's such and such because it's come from education or Hollywood or all those sources. So just bear in mind the difference between those two. I'll probably refer back to it quite a lot uh, as we go on. Second thing is things can be logical but not necessarily related to the real world. Sorry, <laughs> um, things can be uh, logical and not necessarily related to the real world. A good example of that is evolution. I'm not going to get into the whole topic of it uh, tonight, but it, but, but it does relate to it. Um, or DNA, should I say. Chimpanzees and human beings are allegedly 99% similar in DNA. What they infer from that, and what we're all taught as children, and the whole world is taught, is therefore <coughs> humans evolve from DNA. Now that's a perfectly logical um, step to make. It's a perfectly log logical and plausible um, <coughs> way of thinking. However, if I give you another potential explanation, you can see how, well, it's logical, they're both logical, but, but just because it's logical, it doesn't necessarily mean that's correct in terms of the real world. So in terms of, if you say, it, you know, if, if you, you go the other, um, the other side of the fence to evolution, you say everything's been created or designed, then, uh, of course, if you're going to design a chimpanzee and a human being, of course the designs are going to be uh, similar. Of course gonna, you're going to use similar DNA. You're not going to throw away or you know, its DNA for legs, arms, eyes, hair, you know, all, all the rest of it. So quite clearly you're going to have um, uh, you know, uh, not one necessarily leads to the other. And just because something's logical, necessarily or quite obviously it relates to the real world. You're you all with me on that? Did I explain that well? Okay, cool. Um, Everything I'm also going to say tonight, quite clearly, and I always say this when I do wake up Manchester, don't believe a word I say, you don't have to believe a word I say, but I'm not like the guy on the BBC News staring right into you every single night, hypnotising and you're telling him what to think. Please go and research every single thing for yourself. Every single thing that's come from the internet, it's all researchable for yourself quite clearly. <clears throat> that's what you're, you, know, you, expect, you, you expect people who are seeking the truth to go and do as well. Um, and the other thing is, it's just a change of perspective. So... <clears throat> Like I say, it drives people crazy. It's more more the people that that, that have 
uh, I suppose spent a life doing sci more scientific study. Yeah, that really invested in science in whatever in, in all its forms. Or it could it could be it could be any kind of profession that that does involve navigation or you know uh, you know where we're on the you know, pilot sailors etc etc. But at the end of the day, this is just going to be a change of perspective. If it you know if if you if you get what we're talking about tonight. Next slide. I find uh, after a year of uh, well it comes out to arguing with people really, but you think you're trying to explain and, and show people, but. I think one of the problems is if the thing's so ludicrous, because we've all been brought up, we believe in a spinning globe Earth in a vast universe. So if somebody comes along and says none of that's true, we're on a fixed plane, and there's no universal lie, quite clearly, um, you're going to think the person's mad. So any piece of evidence that you come up with, and there's lots and lots and lots, doesn't matter because it's already too ludicrous in the first place. I'm not going to accept it. So quite clearly, I'm just saying have an open mind, let the evidence build up. Let the evidence build up for yourself. Click on. It doesn't depend on one, one piece of information. Yeah. It's, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see the first video or the first, you know, or the first twig or the first idea and suddenly think, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I realise I'm wrong now. Quite clearly, it takes, you know, a lot, uh, uh, a lot of clues. Next, please. Okay. We all know about false flags, the war on terror. Hands up if you don't. You're not aware that. You know, the entire telescreen war, you know, it's all 1984, we're all being led. Everybody knows that, yeah? yeah. Cool, excellent. Let's move on. Uh, our health, quite clearly. The tax ev everywhere. We all know about everything on the screen. Yeah, yeah, cool. Move on. Banking, yeah, move on. Wicked. Every single leader, you know what I mean? You're not falling for Putin's the saviour or anything like that. They're all in on it. You know what I mean? New order, etc., etc. Please move on. What else? You're hundred percent sure the moon landings were fake. Yeah. Yeah. No. Not sure. Yeah. Hands up if you hands up if you're hundred percent sure the moon landings were fake. <laughs> Make this you, yeah. Okay, it's about sixty percent. Cool. Um, everything NASA does is a lie. Um, I, obviously, everybody knows that there's a, there's, a, there's an occult brotherhood, Jesuits, Freemasons. You know what I mean? There's various speculation about you know. <laughs> Who's at the top? Who's running it? All the rest of it, but quite clearly, um, we know about the the, the occult, you know, freaky societies. Uh, and again, we know that we, uh, we, we've been mass programmed through the education system, being indoctrinated. We know quite clearly that uh, it's all propaganda through the media, not just the news, but even the entertainment. It's not entertainment; it's propaganda. It's all to program our minds into believing in, in this cult. Okay, who believes they're living on a spinning globe? Nobody. <laughs> One person. <laughs> so I'm talking to the only converse. Everybody's already researched all this. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, like I say, I, I don't. Uh, you know, um, what I don't do is is go on is go on speculation so much. That, I mean, you do when you first look, look into a topic. You look at everything. You think everything. You you, you want to you know look at everything. You discuss everything. But um, when you get your feet back on the ground, all I want to know is what can I disprove. Okay, if it's something that I can't prove, um, then there's no point in you know saying you know that obviously this is fact. Um, what I think this whole thing needs is for people to realise that we've been deceived, realise that that isn't the model, and then obviously, especially the scientific among us, to go out and find out what the hell is the model. You know what I mean? Let's do, you know, let's work together and find out what it is because they're lying about it. This is the number one reason why we believe the Earth is a ball because we've seen photographic evidence that was taken in 1972 and it was used and used again and again and again and again on so many different pictures. It never twig, hang on a minute, how come it's the same? It's the same. Why come it took, took one picture? You know what I mean? Photographers take hundreds of thousands of pictures, hundreds of pictures of you know one rare bird or whatever it is. Um, we'll come back to it in a minute. Next slide. Everybody's got a globe in the classroom. Everybody's a globe in every classroom. Um, that's another reason. We just taught it. Two and two is four, and the, and, and the world is, the world that you live on is a, is a ball. The difference between primary knowledge and secondary knowledge. Nobody's ever seen that. You've never seen that. It's the secondary knowledge. This is where we live. Okay, fine. Everybody gets taught it. Everybody believes it. Some of it says, "Is that true?" You get laughed at. You're completely insane. You're completely out of the room. You know? Is this science fiction or science fact? Again, nobody's ever seen it. We've never actually had a picture of it. We've seen planets and what have you um, from the ground, but 
this is all conjecture and again it's programmed into us via education again and again and again next slide obviously with this subject we've been um, <coughs> we've been looking out for genuine photographs that's from uh, one of the many uh, weather balloons that were sent up some by school kids what they generally tend to do them GoPro lenses if you probably watch them is they go that way and then flat and then that way as they float up. When they when they when they calm down, quite clearly see the horizon is flat. I tell you the other thing as well, is no matter how high you go up, from that one point went to about what was it, twenty-two miles. The horizon's always at eye level. That would never happen if you were on a ball. And it doesn't matter how big the ball is. This is another thing that we've never we've never questioned to say it's just massive. We're on a, a ball and it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's 24,000 miles in circumference and it's 8,000 miles in diameter and it's so big, you're not going to notice the curve or, or, or anything else. So, <clears throat> but every horizon's always flat, no matter what. You know what, please? Yep. Again, if we've seen all these kind of pictures all our lives, this is the first, first uh, photograph taken from space. And again, flat horizon. Now you can look at that, go back. If you would, <coughs> you know, go on, more, another one, and and they can do they can do one or two things with that, you know what I mean? Because it's always a, it's always a small quarter, and they can say you can get it to imply that it's just part of a massive Earth, but as you've seen, it's a completely not a straight flat horizon. Next, okay, we're, we're gonna we're gonna absolutely uh, we're gonna whiz through these because you all know the moon lines were completely fake. It was completely new shoot. You've got to think as well that. If you're faking the moon landers, they didn't go halfway there. I heard, I heard stories of, uh, well, I think we went there, but there was aliens, or, and, they, and they warned us off, so, so we ran away again. That's from the Hollywood script. It's how easy that people's um, ideas and beliefs about, about, about the world, about, about the truth in the world, are, 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 are mixed up and confused by Hollywood and by education. Um, if you ever want, you know, if you ever really want to tell people, you want to show proof to people that they're, that the, the moon landers are fake. Just show them the landscapes. Just compare man's landscapes from the moon with landscapes from the moon. I just pick, picked a few at random on the internet. We'll, we'll, also just, we'll, we'll run through them in a set, but you can quite clearly tell these are sets and they're painted on. And you know, obviously, the real landscapes from Earth are uh, real landscapes. It's supposed to be a quarter of the size, but you'd still get a sense of depth. Your own eyes, your own senses can quite clearly see um, that you know, uh, the difference between the moon the film set and Earth. It doesn't seem to be any longer than 100 yards, but we'll, we'll flip through them. Yep. Yeah. You can't really see with the colour very well, can you? Okay. <clears throat> we'll quite clearly see there are mountains in the difference, distance. It is going to take you quite a while to, to get over there, unlike the next picture. Yeah, these are painted on. So it's just not the pointer, really. This is a set. That's where the actual set finishes. This is Stanley Kubrick's, yeah, mountains. Let's <clears throat> have what he did for 2001, the year before the, the, the moon land is. Yeah, move on. Uh, Grand Canyon, as you can tell, it's got real depth to it. Again, just, just flick through them. Just compare these side by side, people will soon quite clearly see. Real mountains, fake mountains. Real mountains, fake mountains. Real landscape fake landscape, everything's pristine for the shots. That was the first picture taken by uh, Neil Armstrong from the moon. Gold foil, they love the gold foil NASA. It's a film set, everything you see there is a film set. In 1969 we were a lot more gullible. But it doesn't matter now because it's a done deal. That's what I'm saying about, um, you know, I, I, I suppose received mass um, my science really, it's a done deal, we went to the moon, now we're moving on, now we're on Mars and funny enough we're releasing the Martian at the moment with Matt Damon, they've just released that I mean, you know, NASA have been in the news a hell of a lot recently <clears throat> all of a sudden, you don't hear them from, from for, for years and now almost every week they've discovered a new planet or a new this or a new that that's because this realisation that we've been lied to on this scale is becoming quite clearly mass knowledge. They monitor the, 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 the social networks and the YouTube network. They can see it's going in size. The camera's in it. So it'd be nice if everybody does find out about it. Fake moon rocks given to uh, the Dutch Prime Minister. How we laughed about it. It's petrified wood. I think it went for £348,000 or something at auction. Move up. Uh, I'm not going to go into the lunar lander. Like I said, I didn't know 
how well versed you were with, um, with, with everything. Again, just ask people, how did two men live in what is basically a two-man tent for 14 days? Keep going with um, no toilet, <laughs> no, no store for the way, tiny little bits of oxygen, um, water. Where's, where's no, I don't know where they stored the food. And if we've figured out how to do COT recycling technology, maybe we could tell the global warming alarmist propagandist liars as well about it. Doesn't make sense. And um, that's an exact replica. I don't even know how they got in this door, to be honest, with a back with the with a with a big spacesuit on, but you know. There you go. So a car. Go on, just just flick just fl just flick all through these. Apparently they, they live they, they, they stretch over in hammocks. Inhumane. Go on. Yeah, you go through. Um, this is interesting. They did seven missions to the moon. One crashed. You know what number it was? Apollo 13. It's funny as well, because all the landing sites that they did make... So one didn't crash, he didn't, he didn't get there, and they had to slingshot it, and they, they made a film about it, excuse me. Um, all, all the landing sites are on the on the near side of the moon, the light side of the moon. Um, again, these people don't do anything by halves, they don't miss a trick, everything's numerology and symbology with these, but we'll come back to it in a minute. Um, what I really want to do is talk about how NASA and everything that the public has shown about outer space is completely, they are all Freemasons, it's all part of the occult, they don't try to hide it as well. Um, I found this, I thought, I was, I thought this is very interesting. For people that know what nine, you know, obviously know about nine eleven. The symbology here is is phenomenal. You know what I mean? Nine eleven, right there. Okay, you've got your. It's a thirty year anniversary. Yeah, fair enough. They could have done it at twenty five years. They could have done it at forty years. But they, they chose thirty years. Nine eleven. It's also two years before nine eleven. Quite clearly, what's the ones? Why are the L's? You know what I mean? It's just you know. Any, anyone that knows will make that connection quite easily. Okay, next. Um, you've got your double-headed eagle, the Ross trials, uh, your square and compass, our men on the moon, 33 degree right, southern, uh, you know, Al Al Albert Pike's chapter of the of the occult brotherhood. Yep, move on. Uh, all Freemasons, move on. You can, like I say, you can, you, you, you probably already looked all this up for yourself. This is the crew of Apollo 13. They look really happy. Symbolism everywhere. Go on. Yep. All of this stuff, freely available on the internet, like I say, just in case you weren't sure about myself, <laughs> it's not again hiding it, there's his, there's his big strider hat, yeah, mason, mason ring, keep going. <laughs> um, I don't know if you know about Jack Parsons of JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratories, um, he tied, completely tied in with Alistair Crowley, who you should all know, obviously through... Uh, you know, again, the Freemasons, the Theosophists, uh, self-titled the wickedest man in England. He would have sex with animals, boys, all the rest of it. Um, if he was alive today, it's funny enough, Alistair Crowley, if he was alive today, he would be wickedly popular. He'd be a cool, cool uh, dude. You know what I mean? Satanism is quite popular um, at the moment. The connections, you've got L. Ron Hubbard with Scientology. They were... Uh, L. Ron Hubbard and Jack, Jack Parsons formed a Babylon working sex cult thing in, in Hollywood. Um, and again, this is how NASA got its start. Got its start. Walt Disney is also involved. We'll come back, come back to him shortly as well. Yep. Um, Jack Parsons at an occult ceremony. You can see the Masonic floor there. Um, it's still going on today. It's not old. Um, here's the ISS doing a change of command ritual. Um, again, if you've done any research into NASA and space and the ISS, this is not out, out in space. Again, if you've watched any of the videos, they've got hooks on the um, on the back of them that are floating like like this. I don't know if you've seen the woman with the Medusa hair. That's a that, that's that's a beauty. That you know what I mean. It's got weaving all over the place. It's stuck like that. You know what I mean. But hey, there you go. Everything's connected with the occult with these guys. Yeah. Again, if you're aware of if you're aware of that uh, uh, that side of uh, of everything that's going on. Um, you can you can see quite clearly how uh, NASA outer space or all, all of this connects in. Yeah, keep going. I love this <coughs> motorcycle helmet. It's going to keep you safe. You keep keep you safe from radiation and a, and a shiny and a shiny silver suit. John Glenn, just brilliant. So they start going to try to pretend that they went to the moon. They did their seven missions, but they're one missing. They had the number six. So. Um, so we did we did flight we did space shuttles then, but every space shuttle launch. 
they go up and then they go kind of on the back and, uh, and along for quite a while and then it goes out of out of view and I look for and again try this for yourself if you would on looks on YouTube for one guy 135 missions they did one guy that just pointed the camera out the front window and un, un, uncut and continuously saw go rise up and all the way into outer space I mean I don't know if they didn't go I don't know they were, might, might have gone 4,500 miles up but at least show us that every single video cuts and it normally cuts to a piece of CGI of the satellite spinning that they've got the payload for well, why not just keep it going every single one cuts you always ask yourself as well why do all these launch uh, stations like Cape Canaveral, Cape Kennedy and all these places, why are they all by the sea? If they're all going off the earth, up into space, why not have it in the middle of the land? What difference does it make? It's going up, isn't it? Well, there is the reason for that is because what they do is they go up and they go on the back and they go over out of sight and they parachute down to the sea and they stay out, of the, stay out away for 10 days, two weeks. Or, well, they go to their underwater film studio <laughs> they've got several different types um, it's just a play you know I was quite disappointed I remember being disappointed because I was a sci-fi fan and, and all the rest of it I was quite disappointed when they went from these rockets that you know these outer space rockets that go to the moon it's basically a plane and it even needs some kind of jet things to, 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 to get it going anyway but again you don't question it until you know what I mean until so, somebody I suppose you know gives you a little shake you, you, you just don't question it but it's not just that we didn't go to the moon, it's that they're lying about every single thing about outer space. Next, please. Keep it. Um, Lycra and nylon are going to keep you safe from, again, from Van Allen belts and massive solar flares and radiation, apparently. Mylar, nice reflective surface, Teflon. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> this is an astronaut. I want, I want, go back. Sir. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to be an astronaut when you were a kid. You don't be an astronaut, you've got to know all this science and you've got to know this thing and you've got to be physically fit and all the rest of it. I don't know how many billions they're spending, I do actually. It's 16, 17 billion a year. 17 billion NASA have asked for this year. You think, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if this guy's got, got, got like 17 more degrees than me and, and he knows loads more science than me, but it just doesn't look like, it just doesn't look real at all. Um, that? You think they come up with something more elegant than that? It's like one of them big chuck keys going keep up. Um, anybody seen this recently? Pictures of Pluto out in NASA. I mean, we've got Brian Cox now saying there might be life under Pluto. They've certainly come out with water and an atmosphere all of a sudden. Um, I think it looks like, well a lot of people saw it straight away. You know what I mean? <laughs> keep going. Christmas bauble. This is the biggest one. It's an atlas stone. It's an atlas stone. Honestly, as soon as, as, soon as I, I, I kind of reposted this and said, what the hell is this? People that went to the gym said, is this some kind of observation test? It's quite clearly an atlas, an atlas stone. And again, sorry about the, you know, it's, it's not displaying as, can you go back? It's, it, it's not displaying as good as, it, as good as it could. Go to the atlas stones. You can't really see the texture there, but all they've basically done is taken one of those and filtered it up <coughs> and taken a picture of it and called it another planet. Keep going. <coughs> Somebody's done, uh, did some work on Photoshop with it. Again, you can't really see the, the, the rings here, but you can quite clearly see it's been created. It's been created and, put, uh, and pasted it. There's not been a, uh, uh, what do they call it, a probe? I don't know the name, name, name what they call it. <laughs> Something satanic and Babylonian. Um, but the probe has not flip flown past Pluto and taken that picture quite clearly. Photoshop proves that. Yeah. Uh, this is the latest Dyson. It's not. Oh, it's the latest air conditioner. It's not. Does anybody know what this is? Believe it or not, this is the it's the Kepler telescope. It's the Kepler telescope. Can prove it. Next slide. That's it being built with all its gold gold foil and all the all the all the NASA scientists with the suits as if it's, I don't know, radioactive or something. I don't know. It's, it's about, I suppose, about, it's about as big as a house. Um, here's a picture of in space. Again, go back. That's primary knowledge. Okay? That's some guys building a machine. We don't know whether it's going to work or anything else, but there's some guys building a machine. That's fair enough. Go forward. That's secondary knowledge. That's telling us that it's going to, it's going to fly in space. But that's not actually a picture of it in space. I defy anybody to find a real photo of a real satellite working in space. Yeah, we've just got the Milky, well, I say the Milky Way, whatever the, whatever the streak in the sky is. Um, 
bent it a bit and you know obviously superimposed it again they're all like this this is how it explains how we know about all these other planets out there it's how it detects planets it doesn't actually see them none of these telescopes are out in space you know like actually actually you know seeing them uh, you know with, with these amazing cameras and what have you so now it works um, basically uh, uh, the light from a distant star dips for a bit or re it dips regularly and they measure that and they measure the electromagnetic spectrum of it, the light spectrum of it, that's about it. Now from that, so you're talking about numbers, yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get a list of numbers and what have you. From that we get pictures like this, <coughs> which everybody's seen, yep. They'll, they will then get artists to give you artist renditions. They don't hide it again. They will never say this is a real picture of Kepler 26A or whatever. They're going to say this is an artist impression of what it would look like if we could actually see it. But we've just got basically <coughs> a star that's twinkled a bit. Okay. And um, who's got a telescope? Who's an astronomer? Wicked. Just one. Okay. I've actually, we have actually, we have actually invested in a telescope and started looking a lot more um, since we came across this subject. Here's a lovely, lovely picture, a lovely image of Saturn. This is what Saturn looks like, as we all know, except it's an artist's rendition. This is a painting. <clears throat> you know it's a painting because it's actually got the names of the artists. One did the planet, one did the couple of the moons. Steve Albers did the other moons. This is what Saturn actually looks like. It's the best best photograph telescope of a telescope <laughs> from the ground that I could find a Saturn. So it's got ears, it's got rings, as Galileo said. It's probably got moons as well, but the difference between that one and the one before is that doesn't you don't know what that is. Yeah, the ancients described them as wandering stars. Yep. Here's one of Jupiter. Um again, that's the painting, that's the one we all think of as Jupiter. I'll look for the best one we could find. Uh, from a real telescope from the ground of Jupiter uh, and this one from the Keck <coughs> about, <coughs> about the best I could get, the most detailed again, yeah you could probably get that our, our idea, our image of Jupiter from that but <coughs> I don't know, is it a massive great big gas giant planet millions and billions of miles away I don't know, can't tell from that primary knowledge, secondary knowledge <coughs> that used to be Pluto <coughs> until recently it's changed a lot. The Death Star. <laughs> the big red eye. I, I, remember, I remember, you know, remember it looking like the Death Star. You remember those things. These are all paintings. It's all paintings, it's all images. Yep. Here's the Hubble telescope. I don't know if you recognise this picture of the Earth <coughs> here. From the 1972 shot, and they've superimposed the Hubble on it. It's also looking at distant stars and galaxies for us. Yep. I like this picture of the Hubble the best because, again, click it's on the flat earth it's got a flat horizon completely flat yep does anybody know how the Hubble actually telescope works and we looked into it for you might, you might know a little bit about it it's got a big primary mirror yeah and it catches the light and then it goes to the secondary mirror and then off the secondary mirror there's a little goes into a little hole in the primary mirror and that's where all the really special instrumentation is that does all the things is that about right yeah, something like that. They don't explain where the light where the light goes from the that that from the hole. Yeah, because obviously there's lights there's light shining in the hole, there's gotta be a hole from the for the second mirror to get in, but that's not the important point. When you start looking at the so called technology, all the different instruments that are on the Hubble, it starts to sound like a science science it starts to sound like science fiction, it sounds it starts to sound like somebody who, who wrote for Star Trek on it. Let's go through it very, very quickly. Um, I'm not going to read it all, but they all do pretty much the same thing, yeah. And it basically admits right at the end that none of them actually we're not actually getting. And it was this is from NASA's own um, NASA's own website. But it's got all kinds of, I and mean, they sound great. The 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 cosmic origins spectrograph, and and the and the, they see near ultraviolet, and near infrared, and what, but then they're studying dark energy, and dark matter, which can't be seen, can it? You know. Uh, the ACS, which is the Advanced Camera, so it sees visible light, so it's a camera, but it's designed to study some of the earliest activity in the universe, which I'm assuming is the furthest away. So if there's a camera and it sees visible light, the normal light spectrum that we and other cameras can see, how is it supposed to see the earliest and see dark matter and the most dust distant objects and search for massive planets? All these things. The Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph 
He sees ultraviolet visible and near infrared light, so he sees light basically. It's known for its ability to hunt black holes. While the COS works best with small sources of light, such as stars or quasars, it can map out large objects like galaxies. And it goes on and on, and it's got all these special instruments. And then what we end up with is all these pictures from basically numbers. These are all artist impressions, every single impression that you've got of a galaxy and a whole other worlds and everything else in your head have been put there by this, by instruments that they don't, they don't add up when you start, like I say, when you start really investigating, when you start questioning them. Yep. So the question is why fake the moon landings then? A lot of people, a lot of truthers say, I realise the, the moon landings were faked. It's, it's because of the Cold War with Russia, it's because of, um, you know, to encourage scientists, whatever. You, you, get, you get all kinds of um, excuses, I suppose, excuses for the rulers. But they're never beneficent, they're, they're not, they're not, they're not um, they don't do things for us, they do things for them. And whatever they do, whatever they announce, whatever major push they do, whatever they're selling through the media, um, it's never for our benefit, ever, ever, ever. Yeah. So if you know NASA have been in, never been into space, how can we trust any of those images of the ball Earth that they're, that they're saying that they're, uh, that, that they're taking on these missions? Yeah, they're going to outer space, but they're not. But they're showing us all these images. This is from Voyager, from 1977. It's part of the, the Earth and the Moon um, in the same shot. None of it looks real. That got me really investigating into it. Is there any real video of the Earth spinning in space? There's a lot. There's, there's a few stills. There's should be. There's not as many stills as there should be. But there's no real video. You can find a few composites. I'm going to show one <coughs> that they released this year. That'll really, if you if, if you if you believed anything before, you'll go. Hang on a minute. Um. <coughs> there's no video. You'd want to see that. The Earth's supposed to be a magnificent <coughs> blue jewel in the vastness of space and it's light lit up, it's the only one with life. Yeah, obviously it takes 24 hours to you know, turn, I realise you're not going to see much of it, but I'd like to see, you know, just for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Show us. ISS have got a live feed now. Let's have a look at it. Again, that's not the whole ball of Earth spinning in space really. You've never seen it. Again, investigate for yourself because that's what really got me really thinking on it. We've got all this equipment out there, all these satellites, all these missions and probes, why not any real video of the real of it? <coughs> People won't believe me at first when I show it. How many seen this before? No one's seen it? A couple. This is again, it's official NASA photo from a million miles away from Earth of the moon passing in front of you. I don't know if you can see it up. You can all see it. Sorry, I'm going right on now don't forget the moon's supposed to be orbiting the Earth. Yeah, it's supposed to go around it. That's what they tell us. Well that's just all they've done is quite clearly. And it takes a composite, I'll show you as well, and again you can investigate it yourself. It's on, it's on NASA, NASA's own website. That's just going straight across this it's, it's not going it's not it doesn't it's not going it's not going around the earth, that is it? All they're doing is passing it in front of the earth and spinning the earth a little bit. And as you said, there's no actual movement of the clouds. Now that's five hours. If you click it, it'll, it'll, it'll tell you. Between 3.50 3 and 8.45 p.m. on July the 16th. That's five hours and the clouds just go. There's also a hot spot, if you notice. Pretty much in the middle of the middle of the Earth. But that hot spot is not taken over by the moon when it passes in front. So if the sun's supposed to be in front, it, out here, isn't it? Yeah, there. That's why it's all lit up and you've got a full moon. <coughs> You've got a little hot spot here, if you can see it. There, on the Earth. But the Moon, that doesn't change at all. Quite clearly, <laughs> I can keep going on about this to be honest, but quite clearly, this is a fake. But they're telling us that it's real, it's been, it's been, it's been released to mainstream media. Most of the world thinks this is a real image of Earth. You're mad, shut the hell up. When you actually start examining it, you start looking at it with the open eyes that you've already got, you realise that, no, <coughs> this is a fake too. Because Earth looks different every year, to be honest. 
We're going to really get into that in a minute. Yeah, next. And again, from that 2015 Im Im image, this is a shot from, I think it's 72 again. One of the guys on the moon, there's the distant Earth. Well, if that's right, then it'd be like that. Actually, no. I think. Next. It's probably more like going to be like that. It's going to be about four times the size of the moon appears to us in the sky, you'd expect. If, the, if, if you could actually stand on the moon, and I don't believe you can, I don't believe it is a rock, um, then then the Earth which should look four times as big as the moon does to us, because it's allegedly four times bigger. Next. Uh, this is a still from the same set of images from this Discover satellite. Again, you can check this for yourself if you've got... Um, well, <laughs> you've got the internet. Um, there's something very, very... There's a secret hidden in there. Does anybody, anybody know who doesn't know the, or the, the... Who hasn't really researched into the flyer? Has anybody noticed any, anything odd about this? Is it the word sex? It is indeed. <laughs> it is indeed. It's right, it's right up there. Um, I mean, even before that... And we'll, and, we'll, and we'll go into it, but where the hell's the rest of South America? Is that a flood? Again, I'm going to show you a comparison of all the Earths that, well, not all the Earths, but a few of the Earths that NASA have, have released. And the land masses change, the shape, the shape of the continents change, the colour, the, you know what I mean? And I know, you know, the world changes, but not, not this much. Although I don't think the, <laughs> the colours are going to uh, really bring it out. All that we've done with that 2015 NASA picture, you turn it upside down, you probably already see it, and it says sex. And you think, well, does it? I mean, it says something. It says something. Then it's close. Go on. And again, we, I haven't, we haven't doctored this. This is from the official image from 2015, the official released image. So you can check it out for yourself. If you move on, you think, well, is this? You know, again, again, is it coincidence? But you see exactly the same thing from Disney. Now and again, if you don't know, Disney are programming all the kids. Not just Disney, obviously, all, all, the, all, all the major corporations, all the major propaganda, all the major entertainment, the media, etc., etc. But that's too close, because that's, that's done in exactly the same way. You could do it a, a zillion different kinds of scripts, but that is written in exactly the same way. It's from The Lion King, that. And if you think, again, you know, are we seeing things that aren't, aren't really there? Click on. Now, Walt Disney, Walt Disney are doing this a hell of a lot. <coughs> and again, I don't know if you can make these out, but these are all stills from Disney films. Yeah, all programming. All of these are programming ch children. So how we, we're living in a sex cult. They say this Babylonian death and sex cult, and this is a big part of it. Yeah, Walt Disney itself. We can see the six, the first six on the left of the W. There's another six where the I, with, with the dot of the I, and then there's another six which is the Y. Six, six, six. All part of the same call. Yeah. All programming. It's all programming over mind. Here we go. NASA. You spent, uh, I don't know, you could go, you could, you could spend quite, quite some time going through the, uh, the mnemonics for NASA. Again, when you look into it for yourself. The, the, it, it, you know, obviously it's all, it's all uh, Luciferian deception. Move on. This is what I really wanted to show. Again, these are all NASA images of, Earth, of the place where you're supposed to live. Yeah. Um, the continents change every time. I tried to pick the ones that showed, uh, you know, I, I, I picked America. It could have been anywhere. It could have been the ones that all showed, showed Africa, but America. The size of America here. Now, this is an official 2012 shot from the, uh, the Kuoni uh, satellite of Earth. And they released it, and look at the size of America. It's, it's the biggest continent you've ever seen in your life, but it shrunk back to normal size again in 2015. I mean, that's some serious, that is, if that's true, then we really have got problems. <coughs> you know what I mean? We really have got climate change or, or, or environmental problems, which, again, I think are all made up, and I think they all, they all tie into it. Um, yeah, move on. It's not just the, the NASA side, the so-called news side, the education side, the official side, the, sci the science side. They're getting us on the, on the other side. You're aware of, obviously, NASA, you're aware of Operation Paperclip. Not all of them went to uh, you know, be uh, rocket, rocket technicians. 
all of this is programming as well, and I, more than anybody, or as much as everybody, loves Star Wars, Star Trek, sci-fi, the idea of, you know, flying the fighter and all the rest of it. Um, unfortunately, it's all, again, part of the programming, part of the agenda. Yeah, move on. Yeah, just keep, just, just, just flick through these, I'm sure we're all aware of what sci-fi sci is, but it's, again, year after year, and it's fascinating, it's brilliant stuff, but they're not entertaining us. They're not entertaining us, they're not trying to inspire us, you know, all they're trying to be, and they're not trying to fear us either, I don't think. They're just trying to get us to think in within this box, within this way, obviously, that we're in this vast universe. Now, how can you tell the difference? Just go back a sec. Just go back a couple. So how can you tell the difference? If they can do that, you know what I mean? I've, I've seen spaceships flying and worlds and everything else on the screen. If they can do that, then how do you know that this, the next one, how do you know that the, the ISS and the, the pictures that they show from that, how do we know they're real? It's images on a telescreen, it's secondary knowledge. You haven't been up there and seen it for yourself. And you all say, well, I've, I've, uh, a lot of people say, well, I've, I've seen the curve from a plane. But again, have a look next time. I'll show you. We've got a couple of photos of that, but um, have a look next time for yourself. And again, it's programming. Yeah, it's pre programming. Because again, there's supposed to be thousands and thousands of satellites up there. Some are close, some are, you know, and they're, they're all doing all different kinds of jobs. But any time you see, go back to the ISS one again, any time you see a picture from us, there's never any other satellites on it. And they've started to put a few stars on now, but it'll just do a little bit of token stars. You'll never see all the constellations. That's why you never see any stars on the moon, by the way. Because it would be, I, mean, I would imagine it'd be a pain now, but they've got green screen techniques and everything else to get all the constellations right, so they couldn't do it in 1969 or 1972. Come on. Yeah, come on. That's the best photo I could find of the ISS because people again say, oh, I can track the ISS from the app and they'll look up in the sky and the light's crossing. And they're like, well, you know, guess what? They can, they can coordinate stuff. I don't know, by the way. I don't know if it's a hologram. Again, that's the closest, best um, photo I could get from a, from, a, from a ground telescope. Doesn't look solid to me. Again, you know, it, it's conjecture <laughs> up in your own mind. But that, again, it doesn't, look, <laughs> it, doesn't look, it doesn't look solid. It doesn't look like they're taking you know, all those photos for us. Yep. Yep. More completely different images. I really wanted to add that one for the 1967 one. And again, just some mad colours. Um, unfortunately, the screen's not, not, not bringing it out. But how can the Earth change that much? You know what I mean? And it, and it goes backwards and forwards. Whether it goes brighter, and then it goes duller, and then it goes brighter again. And then it, you know what I mean? The, you know, um, they give us a different picture every time. But again, until you put them all together and see, because obviously they, they, they keep us distracted and occupied the whole time anyway, so that's why people find it hard to connect the dots anyway, you know, on, on, on the regular stuff, on the false flags and the falseness of left and right politics and all the rest of it. Yeah. Lots of, um, like I say, if we'd seen these pictures all our lives, we've seen these photos all our lives, it would be, um, <laughs> it would be a completely different world to be honest but again it's not just the flatness of the horizon you see that with your own eyes everywhere as well it's also the fact that it's, it's at eye level yeah it doesn't matter how high you go or how high they show the shots from and they, when they bend it with the GoPro lenses yeah or whatever techniques they, they, they use and um, the horizon is still at eye level if you run a ball ball and next time you're, you've got a beach ball have a look go from eye level and go up and you'll see the horizon will drop it doesn't matter how big the ball is, you can, imagine, you can imagine the biggest ball you want, start rising up from it, yeah, and see where the horizon is eventually going to go. Yeah, it must start dropping down at some point. You'll never see that with your own eyes. Primary knowledge and secondary knowledge. Because that's what people say. If I was say you've seen the curve from a, from a window uh, of a plane, or from a mountain, um, but you've seen the curve in photos. But here we go. We've got one from the ISS is supposed to be 250 miles up, and it's not curving quite as much as Felix Baumgartner's famous jump from 2012, from 24 miles up. So from 10 times higher, the curve's not quite as much. They're just manipulating the images. It's quite, it's, it's quite clear. And again, the Felix Baumgartner jump, uh, it was a thing. You know what I mean? It was a big event. It certainly happened on social media as well. It was great. It was like, oh, I was jumping from edge of space uh, and all the rest of it, but. But you think number one Red Bulls are just a, just a marketing company? That's all they ever were. They're a marketing company. They don't actually do anything else. We know they, they make a drink, but the marketing comes first. Um, and that whole thing was just so that we'd all look at the shots and go, "Yep, yeah, it's curved here." That's how much 
they're investing into it. I don't, I don't even know if Felix Baumgartner is into it. Uh, you know. Straight through a window, though. Say again? It was straight 100%, 100%. Yeah, I might, I, I, I might have stuck it on as well. Next. Yeah. Um, there's a couple, couple of different jumps, but 71,000 feet, and then all of a sudden, yeah, it goes really curved. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one you've seen. Straight line, straight line, just about to jump out. This is the big famous one. So there's 128,000, just about to jump out. There we go, upside. Curves. And I'll put the, we'll, we'll put the ISS in mm -hmm. again. Again, what we're doing is just bending that thing, and it's programming, programming, programming. Yeah, hang on. Does anybody know what the equation for the curvature of the Earth is? We all live on a curve Earth, yeah? All these, all these professions, yeah, if you're a sailor or a pilot or a, you know, if you're firing a gun, didn't Russia fire a, some missiles a thousand kilometres to hit ISIS targets the, the other day or something? So, so, so they tell us, you know what I mean, on the, in the news. But if, you, if, <laughs> if you're on a ball and you're firing, firing something a thousand, a thousand metres, that is going to drop away quite a bit. Yeah, if you're just aiming like that, you're going to miss your target. Not just them architects and engineers. Um, all kinds of different professions must know what this calculation is because they must have to use it on a daily basis. It should be like I say, like it's e equals c, e, e equals mc squared. Now I don't use it, and you don't use it for m most days. We're not, you know, astrophysicists or, or what have you. Some people might, but we all know that e equals mc squared because it's such an important equation for science. But well, why isn't the curve of the Earth? How oh, everybody knows the curve of the Earth is such and such, and that's why you can't see buildings from such and such. We've never ever thought about it before. All we've been told again is it's just massive. It's a massive place, you'll never see the curve. But there must be, no matter how big you think it is, it's a ball, according to our common belief. So there must be a, there must be some curvature. Okay, even if we can't see it, that's fair enough. But what is the calculation for that curvature? How far um, can I see out? You know, before it drops, before buildings drop away. But it's not common knowledge, it's not something we're all taught, it's not something, uh, so far as I know, engineers or uh, any of these other um, uh, professions are taught. Does anybody know what the, uh, again, like, uh, unless you've actually looked into the flat earth. Uh, is it, uh, is it eight inches per mile squared? Yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> anybody else, uh, was anybody else aware of that? Yeah. Okay, apart from that, uh, unless you look, it's funny how people who look into the flat earth know uh, quite a lot about the measurements of the globe. I know, I know the circumference of the Earth, I know the radius of the Earth. I, I don't believe it's a ball, but I know all the supposed measurements. I never knew them before. But I know about <laughs> all the physics in the globe, ask a flat earther. Yeah. Um, I've gone through them all. Yep. Yeah. Eight inches per mile, mile of distance squared. Now, a lot of people have argued with me online saying, no, it's just eight inches per mile. And they do this on Google, by the way. If you Google curvature of the Earth, it will say eight inches per mile. Yeah, on Wikipedia in the first few, you can dig down, I think the second, the, the, the second page, you, you, you start to you start go to eight inches per, per, per mile of distance squared. If it's eight <laughs> inches per every mile, it'd just be... Fucking enormous. It, well, it'd just be a gentle <laughs> slope. It'd just be a gentle slope, eight inches every mile. I actually worked it out for 3,959 miles for the full radius. If you're only doing eight inches every mile, your drop is half a mile. But people will argue till they're blue in the face because they don't want to let the concept go that they've been taught all their lives. Yeah, at the end of the day, if they're saying that the, the radius is 3,959 miles, <laughs> yeah, then through AutoCAD using, well, through Pythag Pythagorean tr trigonometry using the AutoCAD to however many, 15 digit position, what have you, it's 8 inches per mile of distance squared. So the first mile, you're only going to see, you only have 8 inches of drop, that's fair enough. We can live with that. Second mile, you square it so it's four miles times the eight inches is 32 inches. So it's only a couple of feet, two and a half feet. Again, you're not going to see that much. But when you start getting to 20 miles and 30 miles, 40 miles, 50 miles, well within the distance of regular human eyesight without telescopes, yeah, you're starting to talk about six, seven, a thousand feet drops. So it should be according to if we lived on a ball. And you're not seeing it. And this is probably the, the biggest clue or one of the biggest clues because again it's primary knowledge it's your own sense knowledge you can you can go a, a, anywhere in, anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world i knew this but we've got we've got some examples coming up anyway but see a long distance where things should have dropped over the horizon and they're, and they're quite clearly not yet well famous uh <laughs> semiramis statue of 
slavery, because they do things in reverse, the Satanists. 326 feet above sea level can be clear, can be seen from 60 miles away. 60 times 60 times 8 inches works out to 2,000 feet below their eyes. If you're 60 miles away, it should be 2,000 feet below. You shouldn't be able to see it from 60 miles away. Now, as it happens, actually, this is secondary knowledge. I haven't seen that from myself, neither, neither, neither you, but again, um, you, you, you'll be able to do this with your own eyes, your own experience, in your favourite places, favourite flat places of water. Yep. Um, Notre Dame, Antwerp in Brussels can be apparently seen from 150 miles away. 2.8 miles below the horizon it should be from there. Again, it panics both ways around, so you can see, apparently can see uh, out to sea from the spire, but ship captains can see the spire from all up that far away. Again, that's a secondary knowledge, but there's a lot more examples of this. This is one of the most famous ones within the flat earth community. It's a picture of Chicago. Sears Tower, although I'll say in another slide, it's only 1,400 feet high. Um, we'll give the globe Earth some slack and say it's, eight, I believe it's 1,800 feet, or it's 1,800 feet above sea level. Now, this picture was so, uh, it's so damning for the globe Earth that mainstream media in America sought fit to do a little piece on it. So this photo has been taken by Joshua Nuki. All the way from, I can't remember, it'll come up in a sec, but it's 60 miles away from Chicago. Um, to be honest with you, we should only see, uh, and we should only see like the, ver the, the, the real, the very top, very, very, maybe the very top of the Sears Tower. Can you move on? That's like Spain, I took, a, I took a Google image. To be honest with you, from here, so I'm going to show you a few images now from all around this coast, across Lake Michigan. Yeah? From here to here is 37 miles. Yeah? Obviously, as you move around, it's going to get more and more and more and more. There's, and I've got another map up. There's about five or six posts I'm going to show you now. I'm all the way around here. St. Joe's is the biggest one. It's 59, 60 miles away, right across the bay. And that's flat. Yeah, that's flat sea level. Okay, it's going to be choppy and wavy and all the rest of it, which is one of the reasons why you can't see uh, the buildings. But they're all different. Come on. <coughs> it worked out nicely for me here. Should be 2,300 feet. Uh, below sea level. So that Sears Tower is 1800 feet high, it should be 500 feet below the horizon from 60 miles away. They say, they say it's a mirage, they said it's a superior mirage. So I went looking at what a superior mirage is. These things do exist, but it, look, but it is actually a mirage. It looks like a mirage. It's wavy and it's, you know what I mean, it doesn't look right. And you can tell it's not a one-off because there's, I went looking for more photos of Chicago from different places. Just flick through them. From Stevensville, you see virtually all the skyline there. Go on. It's not a one-off. <clears throat> lots and lots of times people have photoed Chicago from right across the bay. <clears throat> it shouldn't be possible. 37 miles is 900 feet, so you should see <coughs> half of the Sears Tower and probably not much else in the Chicago skyline. It's not the only place in the world. Go on, keep going. Yeah, keep going. It's more proof, more proof, more proof. Right, do you know in Italy, uh, 81 miles from the Isle of Gorgona, so which stands 70 feet above sea level. I haven't even worked it out to be honest, but you can if you want yourself. All you do is take the miles and square it. 80 times 80 times 8 inches. Yeah, and that's how many inches it should be below, and then you obviously divide it by 12 for feet and yards and miles and what have you. Um, <clears throat> shouldn't be able to see it. Some closer to home now as well. The Isle of Man from the Fylde Coast. Um, Again, this is, there's three or four different, different sources here, and it says, you can only see it three or four times a year, yeah, but you can see it, and again, it's, as it say, what does it say on there? 61 miles. 61 miles away, again, that's uh, 1,600 feet, it's nearly a mile, I think. It should be a mile, a mile below the horizon, yeah. Again, I'll put a nice little Google map on for you, but you can check it out for yourselves. Yep. From Cleveland's, completely different shot, completely different photo source. Uh, from Visit Cleveland's again, a couple of more different photos. Isle of Man across the bay. You know, it's the Irish Sea. Um, you know, shouldn't be able to see it if the globe was curved. More, yep. Yep, yep. See it from the North Wales coast as well, all the way from London, no, 75 miles away. Yeah somebody else's photo. Google. 
It was a time when I thought, Google's going to kind of change the world, because you've got all the information, all the world's library, right? Um, all the world's library at your fingertips. Quite clearly, this is the 1984, the Winston Smith, the rewriting of, f of fiction and history that, you know, they warned us about. It's going to be online, it's going to be virtual. The, we know they're going paperless, and it, you know, there's this move to do it. It'll be another generation. But there'll be no paper, everything will be digital, all, all the information will be controlled. You won't be able to get these kind of photos on the images anymore, especially if more people become aware of it. Yep. Showing you this one from 1946, first rocket up in space, yep. There's a big one. <coughs> Difference between primary knowledge and secondary knowledge. Again, we've seen all these photos of the ball earth for our lives, but they've got these big Pacific Oceans and Indian Oceans and Atlantic Oceans, which must kind of bend round. Oh, well, gravity does it, but I don't want to get into that. At the end of the day, have you ever seen water with your own eyes bend into the shape of the ball? It doesn't do it. It does this. Long, big, flat stretches. Yeah, it gets wavy and choppy, but it's just long stretches of big, flat water. Yeah. Yeah, that's what water does. It doesn't bend into the shape of a ball. And again, you can say, well, it's, it, it's, it's huge and what have you. 120 miles long the Suez Canal, no locks at all. No drops. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll leave it, we'll leave it there, we'll have a break. Um, I wanted to mention just the, uh, the Nile as well, goes for 4,300 miles, it drops about 100 miles over that course. It's virtually, yeah, it virtually goes the, the whole radius of the earth and only drops 100 miles from mouth to elevation. So many clues, um, we'll, 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 we'll take a break there for however long, 5, 10, 15 minutes, have a break. <laughs> we're left talking about the non-curvature of water. You've never seen it bend into a ball um, with your own eyes, with your own experience. You've never seen it do that. Um, and we've got, again, you know, serious proof. 120 miles. Again, you can work it out for yourself. There should be some serious curvature. No locks, just flat. Like I said, the, the Nile's the same as well. Um, <clears throat> some people think this is the sea. So, well, it's just the sun reflecting on the sea. Now, the sun doesn't reflect on the sea like that anyway, does it? I've got another picture coming up. There's a little heat spot, there's a hot spot of uh, a reflection of the sun on the clouds. You can't quite see it on this, on this thing, but there's a video of it. There's videos of it on YouTube. If you look up any, any, most of the Flat Earth, Flat Earth, uh, three examples is a good one. Oh, no curvature on Flat Earth, but you'll see this video. And the whole thing bobs up and down. You can see, obviously, the horizon's flat there as well, by the way. The whole thing bobs up and down. But if the sun was 93 million miles away, it wouldn't be bobbing up and down with the Earth. It'd be fixed. Now, obviously, I can't show you the video. You have to go and look, look for yourself. Um, but again, another serious clue from real evidence, from somebody's set up. It's an amateur. It's not NASA. It's not Felix. It's not anything else. Some kids who set up a weather balloon with cameras, GPS, etc., etc. Sent the signal back, and <clears throat> this is what it said. But see, see for yourself, and see if you think the sun is 93 million miles away. As we've all been taught, as every school kid knows, as sound as sounds absolutely mad to say, doesn't look 93 million miles away there to me. You have seen the video for yourself. Obviously, I've just got stills. Let's do this. We're going the right way. Now I've seen the sun look massive on the horizon. Here's a time lapse for yourself that shows it half the size at the zenith. Obviously, forget the obviously the three shiny ones, but you can see the sun does get bigger, and then and then and then you know uh, as it, as it gets nearer, then moves further away. Um, I've also seen, like I say, massive. I've seen massive moons on the horizon. I don't know. This is one you can't tell because of atmosphere, perspective, uh, refraction. But again, people that say, why do you never see it small on the horizon? If it's just coming towards us or coming past us, or it's a, another, another model, basically we're not moving, it is, then how come you never see it you know, small on the horizon? There's proof that you do. Um, here's something you never see. Whenever you see the sun reflecting on water, the reflection is all, all the way to your to the edge of the water, if you stand at the edge of the water, it always comes all the way. Now, I don't know if ever, anybody's ever seen or been aware of this phenomenon, where you're standing on the beach, and you see that the sun's going down, and as it goes down, the reflection recedes across the water. Has anybody ever seen that phenomenon? Is that a thing? I've never seen it. 
it just kind of it's there and then when the sun's not there it's gone now again think about it. if you're on a ball and obviously you're spinning but basically the light of the sun is receding away as it's kind of going over the horizon and that's exactly what should happen that beam of light that uh, reflection of the sun should recede away from it. if it was miles in the distance and we're slowly spinning away from it it should disappear and that would be a a, a, a nice earth phenomenon like a rainbow or, or northern lights <coughs> it doesn't do that it can only do that from above if the sun's directly above us it can only do that kind of reflection on water if it's above us and obviously receding away um, <laughs> I can't get used to this now <laughs> I've seen the curve of the earth when I've been on a plane out of the window I'll tell you now you haven't you've been pre-programmed to think that there's a photo to prove it again that's what you actually see but look for yourself again look for yourself next time you go on a plane uh, it's, you know once it's cruising altitude 35,000 37,000 feet it's about seven miles they only go about seven miles up planes so you're not and people say well you're not then they reverse it and say well you're not going to see the curve from that from that high up anymore from that from that level altitude <coughs> airs rock massive flat horizon airs rock's 15 miles long I've no idea how far that makes it in the in the distance no curve the moons, moons are really interesting one. I don't get into it here again the moon you see a light in the sky you can go back to the moon landings with this <coughs> how it um, so I'm not going to go into it in <laughs> a few minutes um, <coughs> it glows it glows in the dark that's our experience we see it glow in the dark has different phases but again all those shots of the moon from the moon with a you know running about just double speed them by the way you can see they're just running about but they're all grey they're all grey dust it's not glow rocks don't glow like that you've got the white crust of Dover it's about the white it's about the brightest you can see in bright sunlight but it doesn't glow in the do don't glow in the dark and they say again the sun that's lit up by the sun <clears throat> millions of miles away but there's no hot spot on it it's always evenly lit yeah I don't know what the pictures of actually because like, like I said the, the, the moon's a whole other you could spend you could, you could do a whole talk for a couple of hours just on the moon um, the other thing I say really is what again use your own senses when you see the crescent up to about the crescent between the crescent and the half moon especially as the sun's setting check to see if you've ever played pool you should know your angles yeah when the, when the, when the white ball comes off you know, you, know what, you know what angle it's supposed to be so check the angle of the moon as the sun's setting you'll see it's about 10-20% degree off when you actually start watching it for yourself, noticing the sky. It's obviously got to be a clear sky, we don't get many of them with the geoengineering nowadays. <coughs> Tilt of the Earth is 23.4 degrees according to Wikipedia, the official rulers. Coincidence that to carry on to the vertical it's 66.6 .6 degrees. Coincidence that the moon's uh, rotation on its own axis is the same as its orbit on Earth, so we always see the same side of the moon solar eclipse that the moon's 400 times smaller but the sun's 400 times further it just so happens just so happens that earth's in the goldilocks zone for life and everything all the wonderful life that we see but it's unimportant amongst all the billion billions of planets that's why i spend we're spending billions to look look elsewhere it's got all the right elements for life polaris is one of the biggest ones as well everybody knows about the north star and um, it stays above the north pole virtually above the north pole night after night year after year sailors quite uh, famously uh, guide, guide and navigate by it but if you think about it again we're on a supposedly we're all taught we're on a ball earth it's spinning around at a thousand miles an hour 24,000 miles circumference 24 hours in a day it's going around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour the sun's going around the galaxy at 500,000 miles an hour and the galaxy is supposed to be splitting apart from the big bang at 670 million miles an hour something ridiculous check again nasa for yourself the numbers are astronomical so all these galaxies are flying apart and the earth spinning around and wobbling around and all the rest of it yet from 24 trillion miles away the north star polaris still tracks the earth no matter what and in fact they all do all the constellations they stay in constant relation night after night year after year yeah they all they spin about and all the rest of it but there's no parallax, there's no movement with the stars at all. Coincidence, 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 all the time coincidences. I mentioned this before about all the moon 
landing, supposed moon landings, they're all on the same side of the moon. There were seven missions, one failed, number 13. So if you know your Freemason, your occult, your symbology, your numerology, all of that kind of stuff, it all fits in with this. <clears throat> this is what I, I think this, this kind of thing is where people get really crazy because they might have studied science and it works, they might do it for a job. Um, they might spend the whole life doing it. It's one of the reasons why people can't accept truth, whether it's whether it's this crazy subject or whether it's you know just false flags. I say just false flags, vaccinations and GMOs and all the rest of it. And um, they generally spend their lifetime investing in it, whether it's studying it or you know whether it's their whole life and career and profession. To so then turn around and say, oh yeah, I was duped. Oh, I am really clever, but I was duped. You know what I mean? A lot of people won't do it, and I think you know the I, I think the rulers do it. I never knew Isaac Mason. I, I, to be honest with you, there's no actual direct link with him being a Freemason at all, and I did look. There's a Freemason Masonic Lodge named after him. So, that normally gives a guide. He was certainly an alchemist. Yeah? Which today, if you say in science, I'm an alchemist, they, they, they say, okay, you're a, you're a quack. Okay? You're, you're trying to turn lead into gold, etc., etc. Um, not I what I really want to get into, but again, <laughs> Newton wrote Newton's Principia, Principia the, the mass that explains so called explained gravity is three times as big as the Bible and it, and, and it starts with the word if if the earth is a ball same as famously Eratosthenes the Greek guy who measured the curvature of the earth again you've got to assume that the sun's millions of miles away and the earth curved in the first place to come up with that um, that result all of it is connected. Another great hero of the 20th century, Einstein. Yeah, Einstein. It's 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 like April Fools. <clears throat> it's a common phrase. Einstein depicts somebody being somebody being clever, or obviously if you're being sarcastic. Yeah, nice one, Einstein. It's an icon. They made him an icon. This is his Jesuit handler, Lemaitre. Again, I'm not going to get into it. You could do a whole two hours on. Einstein and the fraud of Einstein, um, all of his all of his ideas uh, from other scientists that came before him, Lorenz Poincaré, Maxwell, could go on and on. Again, research for yourself. All of these heroes, um, we don't expect it with science. We've seen it with politics. We've seen it with historical figures. You know, we know World War II and, and all the rest of it, but we don't expect it with the sciences because isn't science? You know, evidence-based isn't observation, isn't it the primary evidence that we were talking about before? But unfortunately, again, there's two sciences. There's your, there's, there's your experimental science that we know about, and then, uh, sorry, there's the experimental science, which is what we, we expect to science, what we all did uh, in chemistry classes and what have you in school. We actually, you do something, you observe the results. But everything's theoretical science nowadays. After Einstein. Everything after Einstein. And Einstein came along just after something called the Michelson-Morley experiment which I may or may not mention shortly. Um, again, look it up for yourself. <sighs> they don't do things by half. It's like I said about how suddenly NASA are in the news every week because people are starting to twig onto this. This has become quite a, quite a big thing on social media. Um, so again, at the end of the 19th century, people were doing real experiments and finding, finding these results, but they've got the means of, they, have, they own the presses. Just like today, they own all the media. So they control the means of information, they control people, and they also control the education system. Because every textbook that we ever read was published by a big publishing house. Who owns those? Who says which, which, which writers get to get, get to get published or not? Really, they got published. Fantastic. Why, what are you writing about? Climate change. Okay. So, it's all, it's, you know, everything's, everything's corrupt as we know. Uh, Newton, Kepler, symbolism. Yeah? I wouldn't be photographed with a pair of compasses or on a checkered floor or with 666 or, 30, or anything like that because I know what the symbolism means and I don't want to be associated with that cult. Yeah? And I'm sure you're all the same. So you don't have a portrait taken. I'm going to come to Copernicus because he's the main guy. He's the one that first started off the heliocentric idea. Right, for, to be honest with you, the history of um, geocentrism and heli heliocentrism or flat earth, the globe earth, it's one of those. The ancients, the ancient Babylonians were all, were all flat earthers, they knew the earth was fixed. Because again, they stood there and, and they, they believed their own senses, they didn't have propaganda program to, to, 
to convince them that their senses were wrong and the opposite was true. I'm going to come to Copernicus because he's he's the one that that really started started off the um, the revolution. In fact, it's called it on the revolutions of the spheres. And uh, like I say, symbolism. The big connection. Who's read some of the Gnostic, the Gnostic stuff, the Hermetica? You come across that in your in your research. Anybody come across that? Um, Hermes Trismeg Trismegistus, the Kybalion, um, any of those, any of that stuff? Yeah, the Gnostic teachings. It's all connected. And like I say, these guys work by symbols. Again, you see, you know, Washington DC, in Rome, in London, there are big obelisks everywhere, there's domes everywhere, there's all seeing eyes, there's sun symbolism, it's everywhere. We are living in a global cult. Science is a big part of it. A big part of this, what I really want to say about Copernicus and his revolutionary uh, tract in the, uh, I think it's the 15th, 16th century, is that there was no science involved with it. He got it from the Hermetica. He got it from Hermes Tris Trismegistus. This is the famous tract that's translated here. I'll read it out to you. In the midst of all, in the middle of all, sits the sun enthroned. In this most beautiful temple could be placed this luminary in any better position from which you can illuminate the whole at once. He is rightly called the lamp, the mind, the ruler of the universe. Hermes Trismegistus names him the visible God. Sophocles Electra calls him the all-seeing. So the sun sits as upon a royal throne, ruling his children, the planets which circle around him. That's sun worship. It's sun worship. It's Babylonian sun, fire, Lucifer worship, the light bearer, the light bringer. Yeah, it's all connected. You see how... I don't know what that, what it is he's supposed to be holding. I, I just looked at it, I saw it, and, and I immediately saw all the symbolism in it. Mercury. I mean, uh, do you know about, uh, I mean, uh, again, I don't think you'll have missed this statue being unveiled in America. The statue of Baphomet with the two kids. I mean, statue of Satan, basically. Yeah, Satanism's fine, no problem. He, you know, again, we know about it. The Illuminati's kind of a... Uh, it's not a secret anymore. They've got it at the at the at the the big music awards. I can't remember what they call them. I pay that little attention to them. Um, but it's all it's all horns and Satan worship, and you know they're, they're, not, they're not even hiding it anymore. They're really not. But in terms of the world that we inhabit or that we think we inhabit, and the image that we have in our heads of being on a ball Earth in a vast universe, and who, what's going to happen next, and maybe we'll find we're going to ruin this planet. Maybe we'll have to find another one, and all the rest of it. All of that is just image in your head. You need to get rid of that secondary knowledge because, well, it's come from these guys and these guys sacrifice children and they have done since Babylonian times. And it's all part of the same thing. Yeah, Con completely connected. Uh, the, the, the Book of Thoth uh, is uh, Hermes, Hermes Trismes, yes, it's another name for, for, for Thoth, which is another name for Mercury, by the way. All the gods, they're all connected. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if it's Greek, Roman, Babylonian, they're all connected, they're all... Basically, say, it, all, it all comes down to the same guy. But again, you can check it out for yourself, all the symbolism, and it does go to masonry again, as well. Again, this sounds like the same thing. This is from Albert Pike's book. His power was symbolised by an eye over a scepter. The sun was turned by the Greeks, the eye of Jupiter, the eye of the world. His all-seeing eye in our lodges, Osiris, invoked as the god that resides in the sun and is enveloped by his rays. La, 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 la. It's devil worship. It's sun worship. It's all we're doing. It's all we're doing by putting the sun. The sun's at the centre, and, and we're just irrelevant moving around it. Even now that your own senses tell you every day that you're not moving at all. Otherwise there won't be a gentle breeze just going just going past. You won't have a gentle breeze. In fact, if airplanes fly at five hundred miles an hour and the planet's spinning with its atmosphere, because that's why you don't feel it, they tell us at a thousand miles an hour, how would a plane ever, ever go against the spin? They'd only have to go one way, they'd only be able to go one way. Go on and on about um, like I say the ball, but what I'm, I'm more interested in is what's really going on and how it connects, how the flat earth connects through everything we do. How many knew or recognised or were aware of the Jesuit sun symbol above the door of number 10 Downing Street? It's the same as the Columbia, uh, sorry, the NBC symbol. Yeah, it's everywhere. And, you know, I, I posted this and a few people say, uh, oh, Ireland's not got one or this one's not got one. It takes me a couple of minutes to have a look through. Uh, and find that the, you know, the, the islands, there's the green sun, right? They've, they've used it. They might not use it for the main flag, they might use it for the military, they might use it for their armed forces or, or whatever. Some, 
but so it's all the same. They're all part of it. We know about the new world order. We 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 know that um, uh, all countries are in on it. There's no good guys and bad guys when it comes to rulers. There's rulers and and, and the rest of us. Um, but it's this religious aspect that it's like I say it's weird because it comes from science, or it seems to come from science, or they they say this is evidence and facts and what have you. But it's actually religious. It's religious worship, and we don't know it. Yeah, you never know you're in a cult until you actually leave it. You know, and we always think about the the uh, I don't know the Moonies, the David uh, David Koresh. Um, you know, or, or or even even you think about it, or, or you used to think about Islamic extremists. We know that you know the the basically CIA mercenaries and what have you now. But um, that these people are being brainwashed. But the problem is when the majority of us, when it's 99% of us, and we're all brainwashed into a cult, then how are you going to know that any, anything's different? You're not going to notice that. Oh, it's just a flag. Oh, it's just a flag. It's just a flag, just, just symbols. But these guys, and, you know, the Pope right there, sun symbolism. It's all connected. Good old Nazis. Cult of Ra. Baal. And the Jesuits. And the Jesuits control all the secret societies. Going back to science just for a minute to say about the, the Michelson Morley experiment. I want to talk about gravity. Think about gravity. Everybody knows kind of gravity keeps you on the keeps you on the on the floor, but it also keeps us in orbit and keeps the moon in orbit and it moves the tides. It does all these magical things. Nobody's ever explained it, nobody's ever proved it. And if you think about it, if we're not on a spinning ball in a vast universe, we're on just a big, massive, fixed plane, and we've got head of the body, you don't need gravity. You don't need gravity to explain anything. You only need it to explain why water curves onto a <coughs> big ball and doesn't fly off like it does on a wet tennis ball. I need gravity for that. Um, <laughs> I like about the moon, I know it's only 240,000 miles away from us, going round, and we're 93 million miles away from the sun, but we're kept in orbit to the sun by its gravity, but at some point surely the moon goes even nearer to the sun. So why doesn't the moon go over there? Why is it, why is it attracted to our gravity and not the sun's gravity? I'll tell you why, because the image that we have in our head is false. It was given to us by repeated programming and indoctrination. Um, Okay. I like this one as well. Again, if you work it out, <coughs> you have to kind of do the model for yourself. But if you're in, we're going allegedly going around the sun. So here's here's you in New York in June. Now every 24 hours, you're going to do almost a complete rotation. We know it's 23 hours, 56 minutes, and this, that, and the other. Okay, again, so he tells. That's the, the rotation of the sun and the moon. But you're not going to be, after six months, completely, your time is not going to be, you know, sort of, that, 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 that would be in the dark, yeah? 24 hours, 24 hours, 24 hours, you're still going to be facing the same way at the same time. At one o'clock, 24 hours later, yeah, it's, still, it's not going to be night time, is it? Yeah? I don't know if you follow me, so I might be able to need a little bit more explanation. Um, <laughs> There's you in New York, and, you, uh, and obviously it's going to rotate and you're going to get however many hours a day and night. But 24 hours later at 1 o'clock, you'll have moved on a little bit, but at 1 o'clock it's still going to be daytime, you're not going to be in the night. That's true for the next day, 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 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock. You say, I change a couple of minutes. By the time you've got all the way over here, yeah, if we're on the other side of the sun, we're going to be in the dark at 1 o'clock. The hours don't change every 12 hours. It's a little bit you have to you have to think about think about that one. It's not something I can um, you need to spend a little time thinking about it. But where again if we're on a, a rotating earth twenty four hours, every twenty four hours it rotates and it moves a little bit around the sun. But by the time you're over there, you've not lost twelve hours so that you're in the darkness. I'll explain that a little bit <laughs> a bit, bit better next time. But again, have a look for yourself. There's some actual there's some videos on YouTube, you can have a look, have a look at that. But again, a nice e is that when you get your head around it, it's quite clear to see that 
um, you know the, the, the you know you're not going to have darkness at one o'clock. That's just you know it's just a ludicrous thing to say. Again, you start off with what, what we know from our senses, from our own experience, and then what can we what can we definitely deduce from there? Airy's failure. <coughs> Again, a very famous experiment. Airy was a royal astronomer, astronomer royal in the 19th century. He put water in a telescope, which slows the light down, um, and he basically wanted to see. Uh, what well, it, it came as a failure, it was a null experiment because he basically got he, he got the result like Michelson Morley that the Earth can't be spinning, it must be the stars that are moving because the light from the stars was slowed down. So you'd have to tilt the telescope slightly. Again, look into it yourself. You'd have to tilt the telescope slightly. If the Earth was moving and the stars were fixed, the, the telescope would have to be tilted slightly as the Earth moves every few minutes. But as he didn't have to tilt the telescope at all, the starlights still came straight. It must be the stars that we're moving, not the Earth. Again, it's scientific experiment at the end of the 19th century. None of that gets done anymore. You won't get, you don't, you, you won't get grants for it. But Fred Hoyle himself, <clears throat> he said that the difference between heliocentrism and geocentrism is, is one of relative motion. We can't tell. Again, our own experience. We stand on a flat Earth and we see the sun go overhead every day. And we see the, and we see the moon sometimes, again. Then how clear it is, and then we see the stars. Not much in the city. Um, but we're told that we're moving and you know most of those are still and that's fair enough so we go okay that's fine but there's no actual the maths works the same for both ways Antarctica is really worth looking into it's got huge potential um, this world is run by greedy it runs on greed and sex and all the worldly desires and temptations that um, they can offer us to basically buy us and buy politicians and you know all the rest of it they've got massive resources in Antarctica huge amounts of coal and oil it'd make everything really cheap you're not allowed to go there you're not allowed to drill 58 countries of uh, sorry uh, I'm not sure how many countries I do apologize they signed it in 1958. There's a treaty, there's an Antarctic treaty that you can't, no corporation, no big company that basically run the world, they can't go and drill there for oil or whatever. Mass, vast, vast mineral resources. Yeah, They're not allowed to go. Is there any other treaty that stood that, that length of time? Why the Antarctica? Again, we previously thought of it, it's this little bottom bit of the pole. What's, what's the big deal with, it, with the South Pole? Why is it so off limits? And again, I, 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 I don't really cover it now because I've covered a lot and I haven't even scratched the surface, I, uh, is the way I feel. But you've got South America and Australia and South Africa yeah, there, and no fly goes under the, or across the South Pole. Not one fly. It would be far, by far the quickest way to do it. Air, airplane fuel, well, probably suppose it's not now with the oil price dropping, but airplane fuel was pretty expensive, certainly one of the major cost to run an airline so why would you go thousands of miles out of the way if you could go especially certainly from south america to australia yeah laws laws about going to antarctica if we decided yeah you know what let's club together let's go and see for ourselves get a big boat well we do it in style we'll do the luxury whatever and we'll go and see for ourselves what's going on there anywhere we wouldn't be able to go you get you you get closed down. You get it's been tried. Loads and loads more questions. Loads and loads more questions that you can ask. Um, horizons always flat. We've covered we've covered a lot of them tonight anyway. Done that one. Done that one. Done that one. Covered most of them. Good. Star trails. Are the stars moving or are we moving? If we're in a vast universe and there's galaxies moving off at different, I don't know, we're, you know, we're talking about big distances and everything else and we're back to Einstein and relativity again. But how can star trails do that really? There should be lots of parallax when we look at the stars. Why are they lying to us? They want to convince us that we're alone in a vast universe we're randomly created there's no purpose to us really there's no purpose to the whole human life there's no purpose to your individual life not really yes of course we have we feel that and we, you know we get on with it anyway you know even if you you know wherever you are um, 
But in the grand scheme of things, in the philosophical, why am I here? You know, in the really big questions, well, if they're already framed by we're in a vast universe, then your options or your thinking gets gets your thinking gets ta uh, gets influenced by your environment 100%. If you believe you're in a vast universe on a spinning ball amongst lots of planets and an unknowable universe, um, then you're going to um, uh, live your life as such, live your life accordingly. I don't believe that there's any vast universe out there. We see stars, but stars are points of light. Everything else is, is inferred. It really is. It's inferred both by Hollywood, by the Star Wars stuff, by the sci-fi stuff, and by, like I say, by NASA, by those by those images which we've basically, you know, gone through and shown that the car, the, these can't be real because the spaceships that they supposedly went on them weren't real either. I love this quote. By removing Earth from the motionless sense of the universe, these dark philosophers who we've talked about have moved us physically and metaphysically from a place of supreme importance to one of complete nihilistic indifference. Does that not sound most of the world today? The kids that are coming up today, the things that are shown, the attitudes that they have. Yeah, we're not very. There's not enough of us that are consciously aware that want to, you know, make the world a better place. Most people are going along with what's thrown at them with with the world. They're not fighting it. They're not saying this this isn't right. Um, if the Earth, however, is the centre of the universe, the ideas of God, creation, and a purpose for human existence are resplendent. If the Earth is just one, billions of, one of billions of planets revolving around billions of stars and billions of galaxies, then the ideas of God, creation, and a specific purpose for Earth and human existence become highly implausible. It goes along, it's part of a trio of things, heliocentrism. It goes along with the Big Bang and evolution, and they're all theories. And it's a trio. And again, evolution, the theory of evolution was something we're all taught as science, as scientific fact. And it's, obviously I can't go into, into much detail now, but it's another one of those things, scientific fact, you must be mad to, um, to question it. But again, when you look into the scientific evidence for it, fossil evidence, the only question you have to ask really with theory of evolution is, show me evidence, show me evidence of one single species turning from for one animal turning from one species into a completely different animal. Fossil evidence, a live animal, a half fish, half frog, a half man, half monkey, yeah, anything like that. And how, how do you have half an eye? Yeah, if we all evolved, we, you know, something created eyes. If we started out as amoeba and then the amoeba at some point created eyes, you know, at some point it's evolution. Well, at some point did it have half an eye or three quarters of an eye or a bit of an eye? Because you need the whole eye to work. Same with the liver and the heart and all the rest of our organs and, 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 well, every part of life, really. It's part of the same thing. It's getting us to believe that we are random and, um, well, undesigned and uncreated. And it's funny for, for you know, for what reports to be, uh, well, not what reports to be, for the truth movement, where we don't, we don't want, um, we don't want religious instruction, we don't want... We don't want bad rules, we don't want bad laws. Um, <coughs> to come kind of full circle round to the idea that there is a, a not only not a creator, but it seems that all of these guys have been spending all their time trying to convince us that there isn't. Through NASA and space lies and then this thing about evolution, like I say, topic. Um, again, you know, look into, look into it for yourself by all means. Um, so it, it all goes down to the same thing. Big Bang, ev uh, Big Bang evolution and heliocentrism are all Kabbalist ideas. They're actually religious ideas. So people that go around thinking that they're atheists are actually, again, probably indoctrinated into this cult. What do I think the Earth looks like? No idea. This is the general model from the Flat Earth Society. I don't believe this is true. I'll tell you why. There's a couple of things actually, but this is one of the main ones. 24 hour our Arctic sun is a fact. And that's been, I'm talking about the Arctic Circle as well, it's not just right on the North Pole. On the Arctic Circle, you get 24 hour sun, but we never see the sun in the North Sky. Yeah? Anyone that's looked into this flat Earth model will say the sun goes round and round and round and round, it goes tighter for our northern summer, and then goes away again as it's doing now for the southern winter, and I, I, I believe this model for a little while, but we could never figure out, hang on a minute, 
So there's the Arctic sun, it must go really tight to never go down, but if we're living here, we never see the sun in the north sky. Yeah? And the models from the Flat Earth Society, it's also the UN map. So again, they have the main idea, but they also control the opposition, they also control the, the, the secondary as far as I'm concerned as well. Um, ancient Hebrew conception, you could also say the ancient Sumerian conception as well. Um, this is probably getting getting to it, but this is why we need people to look into it, scientists especially, um, scientists and explorers and, and, and what have you. Tell us what tell us what it's really like. We want to know what's really like. We you know we, we know we've been lied to. Once you figured out you've been lied to about the, about the model that they've given us, well, I I can't I can't stand there and say this is the model and this is the model and this is the model because I haven't done the experiments or the haven't. With, so we can break down the old model, but let's get together and find out what the new model is. Or what the real model is, not the new model, what the real model is. So, fixed plane earth, it's got mountains and what have you. It's a firmament, a dome above it. Again, the only, the only evidence that there is a, a, some kind of limit to, to the sky is the fact that we obviously haven't been beyond it. There's no evidence, there's no actual hard evidence for it. Where I'm at now, this is probably the closest and it's the map that we're all kind of used to, um, the, the, the Atlas kind of map. The only problem with um, the model that I've got in my head at the moment, and I'm, I'm not saying this is the model and I'm fixed on it, if somebody comes up and as soon as people come up with new information, I'm open to change and that's how we should be, um, is that it does fit perfect together. Remember the old BBC rolling logo? Yeah, you can, you can do it for yourself. I took about three and it's seamless. It's seamless, there's no joints in it whatsoever. So, here's me saying, uh, I think the spinning ball earth is just made up, but I think, <laughs> and again, it wouldn't work if you could prove it where one way or the other, but the sun rises in the east, yeah? Okay, it will go further north and further south from the equator as it goes along. It goes along, lights up the day, yeah, and we can, get, we can look at this one time and day as well. Lights up the day, when it goes to the west, that's the international date timeline, I think it appears straight away at the east again. There's no way of proving it. It's an infinite, it's an infinite space loop, and if it didn't work properly, you'd notice. It'd be like the Bermuda Triangle or something. It's only where I'm up to so far, yeah? But the problem, this is the other problem with this, all, you know, the, 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 the Flat Earth Movements map, is they've got Australia, as big as Russia, as long as Africa, yeah, the, ma the masses are completely wrong, yeah, because again, from first evidence, you, you, you know, people will have measured, people will have measured exactly how, um, um, you know, you can go up in a plane, or, and, and obviously measure along the land, exactly how big these, these continents are, um, that can be confirmed, night and days, where it's night and where it's day can be confirmed by people on the ground, by primary knowledge. Yeah? See, if, if, the, if there's official sunrise for where I live, you know, in the north of England, and they say it's sunrise at 7 o'clock and we know it's sunrise at 5 o'clock, I say, hang on a minute, that's completely wrong. Yeah? The timeanddate.com <coughs> will show you night and day patterns anywhere in the world. Yeah? Um, if I had a video, I could show, show, show you some animations of it. But that, this is about where I'm up to. We're coming to the, coming to the very end of it now. Like I say, it's all completely about getting us away from the idea that the Earth is create, was created by a supreme being. He put us here. Um, and the problem is that, well not the problem is, the idea of heliocentrism, the triple crown heliocentrism, <laughs> Um, uh, the Big Bang and evolution disproves everything in the Bible. It disproves it. But for myself, if I've done the research and gone, hang on a minute, evolution's a okay. Flattered the the globe Earth, the hero centuries, and it's just completely falling apart. And there's no Big Bang. Something can't come out of nothing anyway. Completely scientific, which is why I say it's come from Kabbalism. Well, that puts the Bible back on the table for me. Because people ask, why the flat Earth? There's two things people say. One, it's a psyop. It can't be a psyop, can it? It can't be a psyop if they're not mass doing it. 
It's come, this, is, this is generally come from the ground up. But the other thing is, say, what does it matter? What does it matter if it's flat or round or triangle or square? There's, you know, there's governments and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, you know, they're, they're attacking people and they're doing all this stuff, but it matters everything. It matters everything. It's a, it's a, if it comes down to who we really are, what we're really doing here. The big philosophical questions that every single person asks themselves, whether they, whether they admit it or not, every single person really asks themselves, what am I doing here? Is there a God or isn't there? Why is all religious instruction terrible? Why does no religious instruction ever bring anybody close to God? Or being godly? You know, the religions act terribly. They really do. But this is the, this is the key for me, because I wasn't brought up religious. In fact, I was atheist up until six years ago. This is the key for me, realising that they've lied about this. The size of the deception. Yeah, that they've got us all believing we're on a spinning ball earth. And really, when you go outside and you actually look for yourself and you trust your own senses instead of what they've told us, and you go, this place isn't spinning around at a thousand miles an hour. Yeah, worse still, everything's here for us. The sun and the moon and the stars are a magnificent timepiece that have been created by the Creator, by a God who loves you and loves all of us. And that's why he's created that timepiece for us. But somebody <coughs> has quite cleverly taken that and got us to believe virtually the opposite. The size and the cleverness of the deception is often what puts people off accepting it. Yeah? I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Who used to think they were on a spinning globe Earth and now doesn't? <laughs> I've not convinced anybody yet. Do your own research by all means. Check everything out. I've covered a lot of information and to be honest with you, it's I've been a third or a half of it, I don't think. What um, do you think we are? Say again. What do you think we are? I think we're I think we're human beings. I think we're men and women created by God. And the the, the planet as we know it, what do you think that is? Um in terms of in terms of shape. Yeah, I, th I, th it is. I think it's probably that. I, I, well, in terms of where it is, I think, this, like I say, this idea of, of we're in a vast universe, um, again, I, I think that's in our heads. It's only looking at the stars that we can say that, that, that anybody can convince us. Look, the stars there, yeah, aren't they all suns? But if you get out of your, if you, if you get out of your head, the idea that these stars are also suns and they've got planets, because we're not in a solar system as far as that, as, as as far as of, you know, uncovered. We're in a, all in a solar system with planets. We are, you know, there, that's the Earth, there's the Sun and the Moon and the stars and they're all, you know, whatever they're doing, like I say, I don't know the exact model, but they're all going about for us. It's a magnificent timepiece in the sky for us. Yeah, that's, it, it, the difference is in perspective is it shows you how important we really are. And let's face it, we've been, um, you know, put down and denigrated and shut down for thousands of years, you know what I mean? This has been going on for generations and generations. But instead of thinking, like I say, that we're lost among some vast universe and we might be able to, you know, save this planet, I don't know what's going to happen, and all the rest of it, but it's, no, no, this is all there is. And even though, quite clearly, Lucifer, Satan, the Dark One, the evil people, the Freemasons, whoever you, whoever you want to say, uh, are quite clearly running the world, they're only running the world for as long and as far as God will let them. So, you know, why is there evil in the world? <laughs> you can go on and on and on and on. And on. Um, most people have had religious instruction. Um, I did as well. I rejected it by the time I was 11 years old. I said, what a load of, what a load of crap. I was brought up Jewish, it turns out. They, they don't teach the Bible either. They teach the Talmud. The Talmud was learnt in Babylon when, when, when the Israelites got exiled to Babylon. The Roman Catholic Church does not teach the Bible. It changed, it's changed the Ten Commandments. It's changed. I mean, when, you know, obviously any that's looked into it. They own the Jesuits. The Jesuits own the Freemasons and all the secret societies. They are the most evil. But what a, wouldn't you do that if you were trying to get people away from God? If you, you know, if you're trying to get people to disbelieve that, the best thing to do is infiltrate the religions and 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 go around killing people in the name of God. Yeah, impersonating. I was brought up strict Catholic. Right. I mean, absolutely strict Catholic. Yeah. And um, one of the last days at school, I tried to uh, get us. To uh, become a nun. <laughs> All the late, you know, the young girls, they yeah. tried to convert us to go to, to be a, a, a nun. Mm. Well, the convents were originally invented so the bishops yeah. could, you know, 
There's no celibacy, in, there's nothing, nothing about celibacy in the Bible. We certainly don't worship on a Sunday, you know. Uh, so not just the Catholic religion, all the all the Christian, you know, all the all the all the Protestant denominations. Sunday goes back to sun worship again. We're going back to Lucifer and and, and Satan worship. It's part of the same thing, counterfeit religion. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. It seems to me like that. You know, evil has been sort of controlling the world for a long time. Yeah. Do you think in our lifetime it's changing? Because a lot of stuff recently seems to be really. It looks like it, doesn't it? I think that's yeah. what we're all. That's why we're all. Waiting. I'm. I'm. New, I'm new to the truth movement as well. If you like, I'm. I, I fully woke up in 2013. I've realised all my life that things were wrong. As I said, I think I said in the in, the, in, the, in an interview with Alex, but. Um, uh, and it wasn't until in 2013 that you know it, it, it fully dawned on me that evil wasn't running the world, and he seriously, you know, organised um, psychopathic evil. Um, so there seems to be. I mean, this this particular topic and movement does seem to be growing, you know, exponentially at a faster rate than anything else. But you don't know, you know. I mean, I. I see people say the same things in the flight earth groups that people will say people will say about all kinds of you know everyone's going to get the truth now who's going to find this out and, what, and and everything else and it quite clearly doesn't happen because if they've spent thousands of years raising this system of politics and banking and finance and media and education and every aspect of our lives and um, it's not going to fall apart by even a hundred or a thousand or a hundred thousand people um, uh, you know, I, I believe in it, which would be the best thing that you can do. I, 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 I now believe. Um, are we going to see seeing our lifetime? I keep saying one generation. I mean, I don't know if people were um, looking at the September, September the twenty third and twenty fourth and twenty eighth and all that. I mean, the overhype sort of give it, you know, kind of gives it away in, in the first place. And you're like, well, something might happen, something might not. I certainly kept my, my eye on the stocks and make sure, obviously, if there's going to be a financial crash, let's you know, go out and buy as many tins as you can possibly can. But apart from that, it was we're doing everything up front. It was the Pope going to the UN, signing off the climate change agenda. That fits in with that, that, the, the climate change and the global warming and all the rest, it fits in with you know, the, the flat earth realisation as well, the fixed earth realisation as well. So is all the aliens. Everything alien. I used to, I mean, I don't even know, if, I don't think they need Project Bluebeam. You know, I, I, when I first discovered the flat earth, I thought, well, it's okay, well, Project Bluebeam's the definite, then they definitely do some alien deception. Uh, you know, I have a saviour more than Independence Day, they're coming to invade us and we all have to, you know, get together. Well, that's one way to bring about a, a one world government. And, um, you know, to have a constant, you know, threat from Pluto, I suppose, or wherever they're going to bring the aliens from. Um, but they don't need it. They say, as long as people are. Uh, 100% fixed in this idea that there's basically the, the <laughs> there's no God and there's no purpose to their lives and we are at the mercy of a random forces um, and you know the rulers the rulers wins you know people feel people do feel helpless I think people are way more you know I think people are very aware that there's something seriously wrong when when people aren't getting done for child rape and all the rest of it. You know, and there are establishment figures. If it was you or I, and obviously we wouldn't be child rapers in the first place, because we're not psychopathic Lucifer in Babylonian child sacrifices. But and you know, if you committed a crime, you you, you know damn well you'd be in, you'd, you'd be charged, you'd be you'd be tried, you'd be in prison very very quickly. And rightly so, you know. But there's a second set of there's a there's a second class of or a third class, if you like, of, of, of individuals, and there's millions of them. Um, and they seem immune from the law, and that's not right. You know, the, we don't have justice. We don't have the things that they say that we do, and it all fits in because we're all part of this Babylonian cult. And I say Babylonian; you can call it satanic, you can call it Luciferian. It's a counterfeit religion. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, the prevailing philosophy of the day, and it's very popular in the truth movement and the new age kind of thing is. You know, you can be your own god. We can be our own saviors, and um, that we have it our, in our, ourselves to fully evolve uh, to the next level of consciousness. And I certainly thought that way up until very recently, six nine months ago. Um, but nobody's—I've never seen anybody create. Uh, you know, apart from the usual way that we create life, but n no man or scientist has created life from scratch out of nothing. You know, but yet life exists. So how can those two things, you know, all well, those two things should, you know, certainly give us pause for thought. Um, 
it's different. I, you know, I, I, when I used to read the Bible or religion, it's just a, such a turn off. It's an immediate turn off. That's a, again a good job. That's a brilliant job of programming. You mentioned the word Jesus. You, I've watched enough South Park episodes now, and you know, and all the rest of it. It's, it's a joke. You know, it's a joke figure um, and all the rest of it. But <laughs> if Satan runs the world, and we all think like that. You know, we all think ah, it's all you know, what have you then. You've got to take a second look at it, I think, anyway. I can, I can rant on for ages, mate. <laughs> any more questions specific to the Flat Earth? Any, any, you know? Yeah, um, <clears throat> satellite dishes that we have on our houses, yeah. most, of, or the vast majority of houses in the UK, I would say 80% going on, have a satellite dish. Now, I've looked on Wikipedia recently, and it gives a very clear, um, non-confusing explanation that that is communicating with an orbiting satellite so why then do they all have to be at a low trajectory at a shallow um, angle hmm. and all point in the same direction because surely if they were communicating that something was above us in Earth's orbit It'd do a job roll back, it, it, it would just be mm. up wouldn't it on yeah. our roofs or yeah. on you know pointing why does it have to be at a shallow trajectory and they're all on the same street at least yeah at a point in yeah, the same way yeah well, they're virtually horizontal, aren't they? Well, they're at a very short, yeah. uh, shallow angle. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 um, it's part of the, uh, the the other one I mentioned as well. Um, <laughs> they're obviously pointing to the towers, aren't they? Yes. They're obviously well, pointing to, to cell towers because that's the you know people say jeep. Well, hang on, my GPS works. Um, although GPS has been around since the seventies, so. I'm pretty sure there wasn't that many satellites up there at the time, but your GPS works from uh, uh, cell phone towers, three cell phone towers or triangulate your position, because if it worked off satellites, well, if your mobile worked off satellites anyway, you wouldn't lose your signal in the middle of the countryside, you know, or the middle of the desert or wherever, you know, but, you, know you lose your signal, for covered with satellites, then, you know, you should be, should be blanket coverage everywhere, um, things work, this is what happens, you say, you know, it work, you know people go, well, you're saying science doesn't work and you're talking to me on the internet, you know, how, how can we not have gone to the moon if you're talking to me on the internet? You know, one thing doesn't necessarily follow the other and just again, because the technology works uh, or we've got new technology, you know, I mean, you know, maybe they spent some of the billions of dollars that they've stolen off us um, actually on, you know, you know, producing some decent technology. I think you've given us loads of evidence actual physical proof okay and it was really interesting the part where you were speaking about new york at one o'clock right and then the other side of the sun yeah you'd be in the dark yeah and you'd also see a completely different set of stars behind the sun you wouldn't just see the same constellations would you you'd see totally different arrangements of stars 100 percent. and also if you're on if that's the sun i'm the earth sort of the sun's light should block out a lot of those stars but as we rotate, yeah, we see all the we see all the same stars every night. Yeah, okay. Well, so oh, they, yeah. they, they change. They, well, they, they change slightly from from sea. Well, they, yeah, they, they do change slightly from from the year round, from season to season. But the stars well, rotate slightly right, every night. You wouldn't see the plow, There's no blacked out there. It would all be miles in yeah. the opposite direction. Yeah, we should be facing. We, we would be facing the other way. The holes become apparent once is what I say about weight of evidence the holes become apparent in the model that we've all been given once you start examining it's basically pulling those threads once you start pulling the threads um, you start asking yourself question upon question upon question um, and it's growing like you say it's, it's, it, it's, it's a realisation that's growing because it does come down to people say well what, why is it so important why is the, why is the shape of it so important um, <coughs> because it's you know how how can the world where we live, right? The very basics of the of the land that we stand. On, how can it not be important? The shape of it, and are we? You know, is there a universe out there? Are there any other? If this is the only planet, and if you think about it, you look just look at the variety of life, the millions and millions and millions of diversity of creatures. Yeah, none of none, none of which have ever changed into another one. There is that adaptation, quite obviously, variation in genes and all the rest of it. But um, why would you need another planet? If you look at any of those, any of those uh, life, uh, documentaries, <coughs> wildlife documentaries, insect, doc you know, wildlife documentaries, you see these mad creatures in the sea, right at the bottom of the sea, 
and they look like aliens. They look like you know the, the maddest creatures you, you could possibly think of. <laughs> There's such a variety of life. Again, if you're a creator, yeah, unless we came out randomly from nothing, if you're a creator and you're going to create a world for beings to live in, and, and you know, hopefully one day for you to live with them as well, um, then just create a massive one, great big massive place and put everything there. Why would you have several thousand different planets? Just a basic flat of question, what do you think is at the end then, if you, if you sort of walked in one direction, yeah. but, you know, would you get, are you saying this is massive and then limitless? I, I don't think, I know people say, it's, people think it's limitless, um, I, I think there are bounds to it, but like I say, if you go, if you carry on going west from California, or from South America, whichever way, you'll just end up there. I also think if you go north from Russia, you'll end up, Coming, coming south into Canada and I think it's the same for the south as well obviously Antarctica's it's Antarctica but um, so I think there are limits if you kind of got high enough to see it you could see you could you could you could see the edges of it but I think in terms of actual exploration from from the ground and you're talking I, well I, I could say uh, I don't know whether the, whether the, the, the devil let us do it but if we've got 20 or 30 years and there's plenty of time to find out uh, and certainly make advances on it. Um, so yeah, people say there's an influence. People say is there an influence play. People talk about the ice wall as well. Again, that's that's going back to the circular model. I think there's an ice wall and it's being guarded. But again, if it's twenty five thousand miles, you always get whistleblowers. You know, seventy five NASA scientists have been killed over the last three or four years. Yeah, so people say, well, it's a lot of people to keep quiet, and you know, millions of people, like, thousands of people have to be on it. Thousands of people are in it. They, they join the Freemasons and they swear blood oaths, not just for the Freemasons, it could be, you know, all these secret societies, but they swear oaths to those societies to keep 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 the keep the secrets, keep the secrets. Um, and they get a nice life out of it. Yeah, they get promotions and you know, better jobs and you know, doors open for them. So, you know, the world opens up for them. So people do keep quiet, but you do get whistleblowers. If there was an ice wall and there was a huge big Antarctic ice army guarding it, which is what people you know can conjecture, um, again you'd have whistleblowers, you'd know about it. There's, there's somebody somewhere would say, "What's all this money for?" Yeah, what's all you know? So, somebody somewhere would find out about it. I'm not saying there isn't. I'm not saying that is the you know that is the model and the other model's wrong. But there are enough holes in the other model. I'm saying the round model. Uh, sorry, the, the the flat the flat circle. The globe model for me is gone. But I've been, I've been, I've had these, you know, I've, I've been living this for a year. This might be completely new to you, you might have had a quick look at it, you might have, looked, you know, and what have you. Um, for me, I've, I, you know, like I say, once you've, once you've looked at a weight of evidence, hopefully I've shown you a weight of evidence tonight, and I've not even scratched the surface, I may have done half of it. There's another whole half out there, like I say, the moon and all, and all kinds of things. But if I've shown you enough um, to certainly pique your interest, and see the size of this massive deception then, you know, I've done my job and it's been a worthwhile evening. So they certainly had a gold in the, in the 50s, if, if there is a firmament covering the flat earth with the nuclear testing, where they were just basically firing up in the, in the, in the sky, weren't they? So I would have missed out. Which might have been in stupid, actually. <laughs> stupid thing to do. That might, be where, that might be where meteors come from. So there's, there's things that I, I don't know and I can't explain yet, and, I'm, and you know, there's the certainly not anomalies. Um, well, what about this and what about that? But that's the idea, is you know, for, for people to ask questions and research um, the, the I've themselves. I've got a question. The official line is the Earth's atmosphere moving with the spin of the Earth. Yeah. That's the official line. Yeah. Okay. So when when a space rocket or a shuttle leaves the Earth's atmosphere mm. and then it comes into a vacuum where there isn't 1,036 miles an hour of spin, mm. wouldn't that have some sort of effect on the rocket? You know, akin to try travelling down the motorway at 70 miles an hour and throwing something out and watching the object just go from one speed and decelerating massively. Surely a, something like a space rocket that hasn't got that much shielding, I mean it's only... It's a tin can. Of, yeah. Really? Or, or a shuttle, once it leaves the Earth's atmosphere and then um, goes without the spin, surely that's going to do something. I, I, I'd expect it to rip it apart. Well, it would. Um, there's a lovely video of... <laughs> A vacuum's picking things up, vacuum's beating gravity. But apparently our atmosphere is held in by well, not only gravity the, and, and the vacuum and the pressure. And I may, I, you know, I, I, I might be showing my uh, ignorance of the official scientific line there. I would imagine I am. Um, but it, it, <laughs> it can't be confirmed by actual scientific experiments. 
or actual personal observation. Like I say, the witness testimony of several, you know, if you, if you all told me, I've seen, we've all seen X, Y, Z, hang on a minute, we saw, you know, if, if anything I'd shown tonight, I'd say, oh, hang on a minute, that's not, you know, well, then I've gone, oh, okay, fine. You know, witness, witness testimony of ordinary people is, is, is almost as good as, you know, where you can't, where you can't confirm it for yourself. Um, but this idea that, <laughs> um, you know, the atmosphere, and by the atmosphere, I'm presuming they mean the actual air that we're breathing, it's all spinning around at a thousand miles an hour with us, but how can things, A, you know, how, can, how can a bee go, or a butterfly nicely flap the other way, surely it's got to go with a spin. It doesn't make sense, once you start, you know, thinking about it, and, and it's the Emperor's new clothes, it's something saying, the Emperor's butt naked. It's, the same, it's, it's exactly the same thing with it. Um, I've got a lot to add on that. I hope you've enjoyed that. Any more questions? <laughs> Can we have a couple of children? Mm. Okay then, I'll play you a song. Any particular request? You will. Yeah, we'll
I look so unkind Don't forget your mind has been programmed to feel the way they want it to You remember 1984 or Nazi Germany before Cause that's the state we're already living in right now Hell, I'm watching every move you make If you think you're free, well that's a big mistake Cause you hold out this control right from the cradle to the grave You're just a free range slave Stealing all our best days Taking us away from everything